This is something interesting. These three knives are from an arresting cable off an aircraft carrier. Whoa. Uh, arresting? Is that the cable that catches the... the planes? Wow. These guys sent me a chunk of cable about this big around and it had a rope core and they asked me if I could weld it. Whoa. And I was afraid it might be stainless or something and I couldn't handle that. But I, uh, I burnt the rope out of it Whoa. and then twisted it up and it welded up fine. He wanted to know how many pieces. He sent me nine inches of this. And I got these three knives and a little one. Mm -hmm. And I, I finished the little one. I'm waiting for some handle material. He wanted red, white, and blue spacers under them. Mm -hmm. And it should be here today. I met Cy Swan in 2005 when I got my blacksmithing gear. He was about 68 or 69 years old then, I think, and he's 85 today. I want you to think about that while you watch him and listen to him for the next few minutes. Because frankly, it's astounding. Cy started his career as a cowman. Maybe as a cowboy who wanted to be a cowman. At one point, he and Maxine and their three kids here in Oregon were producing 500,000 pounds of beef a year. And he still owns and manages and feeds and doctors 80 head of Beefmaster Mother Cows. He's owned and operated heavy equipment since he was a young man. And he still owns and operates and repairs his own cats and excavator. As part of being a rancher and a heavy equipment operator, he's been a metal worker and a welder and a fabricator for decades. And probably for the last 30 years, he's been a blacksmith. And today, he forges and sells custom knives pretty much all over the free world. Now besides all this, and perhaps the most impressive aspect of this friend of mine, is that he still reads and he learns and he experiments and he exercises every morning and he plants trees. You know, Clint Eastwood has coined a phrase that, you know, it means more to me with every day that goes by. And it's this, don't let the old man in. Well, let me tell you what, nobody, and I mean nobody does this any better than Cy Swan. Okay, I'm gonna put a, a different belt on to get around the guards. These haven't been out a whole long time, but they've got scalloped edges. And when you're trying to get around radiuses and tight corners, they don't cut in and make unwanted grooves like a sharp edge belt will do. Can you see what? Interesting. So it's just more forgiving yeah. on like cutting in deep with the edge? Right. A lot of times when you're trying to, you'll see I can bend these right around into a, a tube almost. And when I'm, when I'm working around the guards, They let me get around in under here real handily without without cutting in. Oh, so. I got it. I still got a little more work to do there. Yeah, that's really neat. It, Cause they just kind of. Yeah, it just kind of folds up and you don't have a sharp edge to, to dig in. I've only been using them about a year. I, uh, I get them from uh, combat abrasives and they're pretty good. Um, tell me about the two grinders. Is one of them better at one particular thing or, or is one just a backup? No. This is the old old grinder I've had for years, and I still prefer it for some things, but this is a variable speed grinder. And 
when you're doing the wood and stuff or you're trying to get into something that you want to be real tender with, you can slow this down. Oh. Where it's just crawling. Or it'll go way up. Nice. And when you're doing wood, the micarta, especially after your belt gets just a little dull, it needs to slow down or it it kind of burns things. Mm -hmm. The uh, even the micarta, you can see on this one with the this this is a full speed all the time belt. It starts turning a little brown and that's just, just from heat? Yeah. It just discolors it. With the wood like this is an ironwood handle and it will actually char it. It'll turn black. So you can't go real fast with a dull, mm -hmm. dull belt, but when you slow it down to uh, half speed or so, mm -hmm. then then the belt will still cut. Um, separate from the variable speed in terms of the design, they actually look fairly similar, I guess. Well, they, uh, actually, that do, has a few more wheels, doesn't it? They do, except this one has a much thinner platen. Oh. And this one is so heavy and thick that you can't you can't get around oh. it like interesting. This, one. this is so heavy here that it's it's over a half inch thick. Right. So, so it's almost like it's counterintuitive, but the lighter weight is kind of helpful there. I'm sure there's times when you really want to lean on a thick well, one. Well, you also. can lean on that because that's steel. This is, I guess, this is steel too, but. Uh, this is a really nice grinder. It's, it's, uh, it was a little bit weak on the spring to keep the tension right. I put another spring on it. Mm. Uh, but it's got a, that variable speed, uh, controller on it. And the dust is a little hard on this. Yeah. We've had to blow it out a couple of times and it's actually burned up once. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, you don't think that these things could set a fire, but they, they, if you grind, if you're grinding a lot of wood or, or micarta, they get real dusty under here. And then you go back to grinding steel and they're throwing sparks in that dust. Got it. And they'll start to smolder. Yeah. Then you can smell them all the time when, when they start smoldering like that. But Yeah. How long have you had this one, your, your green one? Oh, it's probably 25, 20, maybe 25 years. Oh, wow. Uh, I had one little problem with the motor. I had to put a new capacitor in it. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's run... Fine. I've got, I've had to put bearings in mm. the lower pulley a couple times. It's going so much faster than the others because it's small. Yeah. It burns. Burn. Is it, is a two by 72 pretty much the only way to do it when you're making knives there? I know there's like one by, what are the other ones? One by fours or something? Well, yes. Yeah. I think they're the best. There's there's bigger ones. There's three by uh, hundred and something, yeah. and and the longer belts stay cooler. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I've never never had one of them, so I don't really know much about them. Yeah, but I've got a a two by forty eight in there on a Baldor motor, and it's a pretty strong machine but I don't use it for really shaping blades mm -hmm. and stuff it's more of a 
sharpen tools and sharpen stuff with it out out in the blacksmith shop. Yeah. Very handy out there. Yeah. We start these with a, a 36 grit belt, which is on this right now. And that's a pretty coarse belt. There are coarsers, there's 20s, but this really moves a lot of material, either steel or wood, but it leaves some pretty deep scratches. And then we go down to a 120, which is a fairly smooth belt and cleaned it all up. And then we went to a 220 and this, this little scallop belt's a 222. And then when I get them pretty well smoothed up, I'll go with a 400. And by that time, they're starting to get a little bit of shine to them. And then we put them on the buffer and they go on a buffer wheel. So. Got it. So, so what did you say? 400 is the final sand before the buffer? Yeah, they, there's other grits, but that's mm -hmm. that's far far as I usually take it. Yeah. If I'm trying to polish a blade, I'll go with a six and an eight yeah. hundred, and I've even got some twelve hundreds and sixteen hundreds, but they don't they don't do much except just rub on it. Hey, um, talk to me about this specific knife design because I see you make a lot of this kind of shape. I assume it's a shape that works for you for lots of reasons. So, how what is this shape? How how'd you come to it? And just a, talk about it a little a bit. It's a semi fighter that I kind of made a lot of. And I, I also sell it for a Bowie knife, but I like the I like the knife. It's a it, it's a multi-purpose thing. But uh, if they want a big knife, this is usually what I make them. Mm -hmm. So that having that long kind of clip, I'm guessing that's useful for for what? Well, it penetrates better. Yeah. Uh, so for like poking in and yeah. slicing in, stabbing it'll actually, in. It'll actually open up the belly on a cow pretty easy too, but this isn't a real hunting knife mm -hmm. as such. I I prefer a shorter knife when I'm skinning and working with, with meat. It's a, I got about a four and a half, five inch blade that I use. Mm -hmm. quite, a, quite a bit shorter than this and built differently. Hmm. Nice. So it's really, it's a, it's probably quite an all around knife. In other words, it could be a hunting knife if you. Yeah, it is. I mean, yeah. it, it, you could use it for anything. It yeah. makes a good kitchen knife. Yeah. And you got, show us the three. You got three here almost done, right? That are kind yeah. of a match. Yeah. The only thing that's different on them is the handle. They're all Damascus. And these two are micarta and this is ironwood. And this is a, what you call coyote micarta. Mm -hmm. People seem to like that name because I sell more of them than <laughs> anything else. That's no, not the name, it's the color. It's a cool looking handle. <laughs> yeah, and then, then the black, this is a smooth micarta like is on the old buck knives. Mm. Oh yeah. And it polishes up to a, a bright, shiny black. Yeah. yeah. And what, what are you making your Damascus from these days? Has it changed at all? Not really. This. Well, it has a little bit. Two of these knives are 15 N20, 1095, and then I put a strip of 1084 in them, and the 1084 makes a black streak through them that gives it a little more bling. The other one's strictly, the, uh, and I'm not sure which is which right now, uh, the 15 N20 and the 1095 and it's just a straight ladder pattern. I made a ladder out of these. I was experimenting with it. And that black goes through the pattern and it, it adds a little more interest to it. Mm -hmm. Have you changed anything about, now that you've, you've made it a lot of knives before you started selling them online, but you've made a lot since then also. Have you learned anything major or changed any part of your process from when you kind of started selling knives online to now? I mean, you just named one, I guess, but anything else? Uh, I've become more methodical about it, and I'm not a real methodical person, but uh, it's, it's become 
a little more organized, maybe if that's the right word. I, in other words, I do things like I'll forge two or three knives like this together. And then I go to uh, the grinders and run them all the way through. Mm -hmm. And it's easier for me to work on them uh, in a bunch that way because while I'm waiting for one to cure here or do something else, I can work on the other two and I can go back and forth and it's it's a little handier for me. Mm -hmm. Is there like a grinding knives? Every time I've tried, I usually fail or it doesn't go well. Is there a warm up like phase where you kind of like have to warm up and get in the zone in order to really dial it in? Or are you at this point just riding it, a bike? It's it's mostly you can you can sit right down and do it. My son uses a jig that I have here that he likes his to be exact. Mm -hmm. And I set up a jig for him and he can set the angle on that to where it's just right. And he sets his blade up on an angle iron with a clamp on it. Mm -hmm. And then he runs that against the, and he does a really nice job of doing it. I do mine all freehand. And what, what the mistake that most people make when they go to grind, they're too tentative. They, they're afraid of this and they they, they wiggle. When you, when you want to get your angles right, you get down on that and you press. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes the full taper as you, as, you, as you get deeper and deeper into the blade, you keep a pretty straight line that way. Whereas if you're too tentative, and someday when you're out there at your dad's, and, and we get a chance, I'll mm -hmm. show you the difference. When you just really bear down on it, hmm. uh, it's a whole lot easier to do it. You know, that makes sense because when you're tentative, you might think you're being conservative or safe, but you're probably actually just directing the grinding on a very small part, you which are. could mess that and, knife and, up, and right? And you get, you get multiple angles and facets in your blade. Yes. And... And then people get, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it. <laughs> and they get all flustered. And I've had several people in here that wanted to make knives. There's one right there. He got so flustered trying to grind that knife that he'd never come back. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a game changer for me, you know, years ago to get the blacksmithing gear that was gifted to me. And then the second part of that game changer was to meet Sai and engage with him and begin to learn the craft from him. But blacksmithing is not the only thing that I've learned. And I hope that I have 20 more years with Sai to learn the other things that he can teach me. But I intend to never forget what I've learned about keeping the old man out. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.